So welcome, in this episode, we're gonna be showing off my brand new dump trailer. If you're in the market for a dump trailer or just genuinely curious about them, you don't wanna miss this episode. I've did a lot of research really over several years and I finally decided to pull the trigger. And I've been doing heavy research here lately on dump trailers and there's some features of this one that's relatively new to me that you may not know about that you might be interested in. So before we dive into this, this isn't bragging or anything, but I want y'all to know I'm extremely excited. I have been dreaming about having me a dump trailer for almost three years. We've even had some amazing viewers that's followed the channel for that long has made donations toward it so i finally decided to pull the trigger although yes they're expensive you help make this possible you help put a dent in this without a doubt so i want to thank our viewers first and foremost for supporting the channel and for supporting this purchase we can do a heck of a lot of work on the channel with this right here so without further ado let me explain what my brand new dump trailer is show off all the features and let me tell you why i think this is probably one of the best dump trailers best bargains for the money out right now. So for starters, this here is an Iron Bull seven foot wide by 14 foot long dump trailer. And Iron Bull is made by a company called North Star. So you'll see North Star trailers, Iron Bull trailers, they're very, very similar. Although the Iron Bull I have noticed from some of the specs that I have checked, has better doors, a little bit thicker steel floors, but I'm sure you can probably upgrade the North Star as well. So if you're in a market for a dump trailer like I have been, you're going to notice the prices are all over the place. And let me explain what you're going to get for your money in some areas where you definitely do not want to cut any corners. So one thing I really do like about this trailer, it has stamped 10 gauge sides. So there's not a whole bunch of reinforcements there. That could be a good thing or could be a bad thing, but 10 gauge is quite thick for a side. I really like the way they have stamped it in and out. That really does add a lot of strength and you don't wind up with all the ugly welded supports on the outside like you see on flat side trailers. Again, there could be some advantages and disadvantages to that. That's just the way this trailer right here comes. The big steel floor, you notice no center welded seam. It's one solid piece and that is a seven gauge deck. One of the thickest that I could find, especially in this price range. That's one thing we're gonna talk about with this trailer. Everything seems extremely well built and you're getting much thicker materials than I found on models even more expensive than this one. So let's go ahead and start at the back end, the three-way gate or three-way door. Some of the cheaper models I was looking at, and by cheaper models, I mean $2,000 less than this. So while that's significant money, this was so much more trailer for the additional $2,000 I paid. But majority of your dump trailers are gonna come with cheap ones now, not your better built ones, are gonna come with single, what they call barn doors, that swing open like this. And this is gonna take care of the majority of your needs for dumping. One thing that I really like that they've done with this trailer, you see these big, thick 3.8 steel welded on hooks right here? They've done it for a reason. The dump trailers I've used in the past, you swing the door open, there's a chain catch up here, you have a big old rusty chain dangling from the door that beats around everywhere, you have to hang it up there. This is actually made to hook on this gigantic welded D-ring that's on the door. I really like that design. So you flip it up, hook it in. Now the door cannot fall open when I'm up dumping in there. Way overbuilt for what it's needed to do just to hold a door open, but I'm noticing everything is very well built on this trailer. So the doors are also 10 gauge steel. Some of the cheaper models I was looking at were 11 gauge or even 14 gauge. That is way too thin for a dump trailer. So that's your typical barn door style right there. And it has what looks to be kind of like a forged hinge here that latches it closed. That is quite standard on the majority of your dump trailers. Now here's another feature that I really got to thinking about and I decided I won't. We're eventually gonna rock our driveway. Thus the reason for getting, well, a very large size dump trailer. I can haul a couple huge several yard scoops of rock in here and we're gonna start building out our driveway. <clears throat> what that also means is probably once or twice a year, I'm gonna have to go get another load of rock and I'm gonna tailgate and smooth out the rock down the driveway, fill in any potholes. This allows you to tailgate just like a dump truck. So if you had a dump trailer that just had doors that swung open, you'd have to dump the pile somewhere down the road, come back with the tractor and take a long time to smooth it all out. Whereas this one right here has the tailgating feature. So you pop this big latch open down here. Now this tailgate can hinge out. 
and there's chains right here to where I can adjust how far I want the tailgate to come open. So as I tilt the dump bed up, rock comes to the rear, it's gonna push out this tailgate anyways to wherever I have it adjusted, leave a small gap down here at the bottom, and it's gonna evenly spread rock as I actually drive down the road. So that's a very nice feature for tailgating out rock. So that's pretty standard and can be found in a lot of dump trailers. Again, your cheap ones are just gonna have the barn doors. Some of your mid-grade ones will typically have a two-way gate that allows you to spread and do the barn door opening. And then a lot of the newer ones now are coming with what's called a three-way gate. And that was very important for my setup right here because while 99% of what I want this dump trailer for is hauling dirt, mulch, compost, rock, I occasionally need to maybe carry my tractor somewhere to pick up some logs or dirt or something to put in here, or if I need to carry it in for service. I don't have a big equipment trailer. I can't justify a several thousand dollar equipment trailer because I just never take my tractor anywhere, honestly. And I wanted to get a robust enough trailer right here that could haul that in. And speaking of that, this trailer has two Dexter 7,000 pound axles underneath with 10 ply tires electronic brakes, and the trailer itself weighs in at 4,000 pounds with the thicker steel that it has, so I can carry 10,000 pounds of capacity because it's a 14,000 gross vehicle weight trailer. Luckily, my tractor weighs about 8,000 pounds with the water-filled tires and everything else, so I still have plenty of capacity left. I'm not overloading the trailer. Now, my truck, on the other hand, is not gonna be happy towing that, but it can get me back and forth to the shop if need be. So a 14-foot trailer is probably a bit small for trying to use an equipment trailer. It would haul a skid steer, no problem, they're compact. Actually, my tractor, I've done checked, fits in here with two feet to spare, even leaving the loader arms on. However, if I wanna come in here with the bucket, what I can do is drive into the front, drop the bucket off, lift my arms up and put them over the bucket, and I still have plenty of room front and rear to actually back my tractor up back and forth. But I would not go any shorter than a 14 foot. I was gonna go with a 16 foot. They're sold completely out here in the Southeast, like all brands, I could hardly find anybody with a 16 footer except a very light built trailer. Now, to be honest with you, 16 foot's way bigger of a dump trailer than I need. Actually, I really wanted a 12 footer, but I knew I needed to go a little bit larger for hauling equipment. This three-way gate is what makes this whole process work. Say I wanted to carry my root rake on here and go pick up some logs I'm gonna bring back. Well, with a three-way gate, I can actually fold this down, extend my deck out to 16 feet. I can back my tractor in, although I'll have to watch tongue weight, and I could put my large grapple back here on this very heavy-duty gate. This three-way gate also allows me to lay down just like a typical tailgate, although it's much more robust and I can carry a long material, like if I had 18 or 20 foot logs or anything else like that that I really needed to carry, some long lumber, long material, well now I can do it in this dump trailer and hang out up here another additional two plus feet. So it's a little more complicated to take this down to a three-way, but it's not bad. You have to take these very robust spring clips out here. You have pins that come right out the top, hinge pins. Now we're gonna hinge off the bottom and go ahead and have your chains in in case your gate were to fall down. All right, so take the two pins out the top. Again, these chains are adjustable. You can move them in or out. And I'll go ahead and admit, my chains appear to be cut one length short. So you're noticing this is not gonna lay flat. I'm gonna go to the hardware store and get two new chains for either side so we can do that. All you do now is pull out and you've got a very, very heavy duty tailgate. Now I've got a 16 foot dump bed right here. So what I'd have to do in this instance, I already have the tractor in here, grapple lifted up, and then I could turn around and configure the tailgate this way, drop it down. It takes a few minutes to set up, but I did not buy this for equipment trailer, but I wanted to have a backup option for that. So on the bottom side of the tailgate, you see a very heavy, looks like piece of three eighths or maybe half inch steel right here. This is for your ramps. This one has hidden compartments. Wait till I lift the trailer and you see this. You flip these down and you've got 80 inch long ramps that came standard with this. By the way, that's the other thing to watch. Some of the cheaper trailers didn't even come with ramps. Very, very heavy built, will easily handle my tractor. And there's another one over here on the other side. By the way, another thing worth mentioning while I see it, all of the hinges are greasable. I really like seeing that all the way down to the tiny little hinges for my ramp covers. Welded in D-rings front and rear for strapping down your equipment. I do wish those were welded on the side because those will eventually get in the way when I'm dumping something like firewood. 
they could catch up on it. But I do understand why they welded to the bottom. There's a lot of reinforcement support underneath that steel, and that's a seven gauge deck, very thick. Whereas the sides are nowhere near as strong as the floor. So it makes sense, they are welded there. I would like to have seen a reinforcement in the side and then welded to the side though. And since we're grappling a little, what you'll typically see on your higher end trailers that you're not seeing here on mine is the sides are welded every so often. I would love to see the sides completely welded out or even rolled. Typically that's on your even higher end trailers because that keeps water from puddling up, dirt and everything else and causing that little rust seam that you see. So things you're not gonna find on cheaper trailers that you're gonna see right here on this one. Again, excellent for the price. Stabilizer supports. I'm gonna build my own stabilizers. They actually drop down and make contact with the ground. So when you're pulling a heavy piece of equipment in, it won't actually lift your truck off the ground. So I'm gonna build those. I could have bought them, they were 200 bucks, but at least they already have the supports welded to the trailer. I've got the steel for free here, so I'll make my own real quick. Very heavy duty fenders. And again, what you're not gonna see on cheap trailers, looks like they're fully welded in. I don't see any gaps where nothing can get around there and rust out. By the way, powder coated. Cheap trailers are gonna be, well, cheap old Rust-Oleum paint. This is all powder coat. Typically, that's what you find on better belt trailers as well. Tie downs everywhere for tarps. Speaking of tarps, this one come with a full tarp kit. It's rolled up in there. Can release it right here. Roll it out, hang it all in the rear. That's actually required whenever you're hauling certain types of loose material. You don't want to get pulled over by a DOT there. Or if you want to cover up, maybe keep stuff from getting wet or just blowing out on traffic. Most trailers do not come with a tarp kit. That's an add-on. That was already included in mine. And then really nice features like weld on steps so you can actually step on that, look into the trailer. That's another nice feature. If I wanna get up here, take a look at what's going on here, maybe reach down and grab something. Little things like that, you're just not gonna find on your lower quality trailers. Like I said earlier, this is a 14,000 pound trailer. So that's two 7,000 pound Dexter axles with electric brakes. I like the blacked out wheels and they included a weld on spare tire holder. That's something else you don't get on cheaper built trailers. I did have to purchase the spare tire extra. It was $250, but I really wanted the blacked out tire to match the other ones. All LED lights and wait till you see how they run the wires underneath. All right, other things you're not gonna get on your really cheap built trailers. Fully adjustable two and five sixteenths ball coupler so I can adjust up and down depending on the size vehicle that you have, how far it is off the ground. That keeps you from having to buy an adjustable hitch or a bunch of different drop hitches. So the jack, most of the cheaper models I've seen come with a 7,000 pound jack. That right there is 12,000 pound support, 10,000 pound lift. So that's upgraded, a very robust jack. And look at the size of this front storage box. This is what has our hydraulics and remote and all in there, but it's oversized. It's bigger than the other trailers I was looking at too, which is great. Because what that means is I can put extra chains, straps, and other things in there as well. It came with a deep cycle battery, a long reach remote, although I think I'm gonna put a wireless remote on this. There's the hydraulic pump. And it even came with a five amp battery charger that you plug in out here. A lot of people keep recommending I should put a uh, solar charger on this. I probably will because they are very affordable. Full six inch I-beam frame. What you'll typically find on your higher end trailers is a full boxed out steel frame. Although I find that six inch I-beam and as robust as all this is built, this is overkill for what I will ever use this for. And you can see like the supports for the hydraulic, that's all three eighths inch steel. Everything looks so robust. All right, so this is worth talking about. Let's spend just a couple minutes here. There is three main styles of lifting mechanisms or lifting hydraulic systems you're gonna see on dump trailers nowadays. Typically, the cheapest dump trailers of all have a dual cylinder setup that's underneath, kind of toward the back third of the trailer. And well, there's some design problems with that. One, it's been the most tested design, been around forever, it, it's kind of the cheapest. They just basically push straight up on the trailer, hinge from underneath off the frame, and you're ready to go. So the first problem with under trailer cylinders people don't think of is dirt, grime, and especially if you live in a state that salts your roads. Well, your cylinders down there getting exposed to all that. The other problem is, say you have a very full dump trailer right here. Again, we can hold 10,000 pounds in here. If you load too far to the front when you're trying to lift from basically the back third, back half, 
that's a lot of force on those cylinders and it makes it very hard for them to be able to lift the trailer up. If you've used a dump trailer a lot like I have, we've probably all experienced at some point where you had so much load in the front, say wet sand or rock, and guess what? You can't even lift it. You have to come up with some weird way to come around here and help assist this until it gets up high enough that the hydraulics are stronger. The second style is called a single cylinder scissor lift and it has a scissoring action underneath that's kind of, well, on some little bit higher end trailers. And Iron Bull also makes a scissor lift trailer as well. Those tend to be a little more robust in the lifting mechanism as far as the way they all bolt and weld in underneath, but you're kind of left again with the same problem. You're trying to lift from the middle to back side of the trailer and you have to be careful with your loading. One of the newer styles that you're starting to see on a lot of trailers is called a telescopic lifting cylinder right here. So this is a three-stage telescopic cylinder and it makes the most sense in my mind. It's lifting from the front side of the trailer. Think about this. If you go to pick up a heavy wheelbarrow or you go to flip, say, a heavy tire or something over, you're going to go grab from the outside edge where you're going to get the most leverage and lifting force right there. You're not going to go lift from the middle or anywhere else unless you're trying to pick it up and carry it off. Outside edge while the other end stays back on a hinge, is gonna give you the best mechanical advantage. So lifting from the front makes the most sense. I've watched a ton of tests and talked with a lot of people about the front cylinder lifting dump beds, and just about everybody has shown either in videos or expressed that these lift far more than the back cylinders do and it just makes the most sense i've even seen a lot of tests on youtube where people will purposely overload these trailers to the front and this cylinder right here always seems to win i want that just in case i'm new to this and accidentally overload the front with a bunch of wet dirt and then i find a trailer that can't lift itself this one looks like it'll probably do the job now there are some advantages to the other system some people claim this is slower although you're about to see i find this plenty fast enough it lifts far higher than I ever imagined. I think this is going to be the perfect system for me right here. All right, so let's lift this thing up. I wanna show you the underneath side. This isn't your typical trailer with just a few cross supports welded in. Oh no, they've got something unique going on and I really, really like the design of this, especially for hauling equipment. Wait till you see this. So what you're gonna find with a three-stage hydraulic cylinder like this one right here is the first stage is a little slow, but that's what's doing your heavy lifting. That's your biggest bore as well. Then you'll hear it kick into the second stage, a smaller bore. It'll start moving even faster. And once it gets up toward the top where it's having to do the least amount of lifting because all your weight shifted to the rear, it goes into the third stage and really takes off. So here we go. So here's that first heavy lifting stage. I still find that quite fast. And you're gonna hear stage number two kick in in just a second. All right, there's stage two. We're going a little faster. There's stage three, now it's really starting to move. Look at how high this dumps, I love this. So compared to some of the smaller dump trailers I've used in the past, the tilt angle of this is amazing. It dumps really well. I don't know how well y'all can see that angle, but everything is gonna come out of that. That is a heck of an angle, at least for what I'm used to. So I'm not really sure what this is. I think this is a safety device. I like it. So this locks in right there. Looks like that can keep the trailer from coming all the way down and crushing you. Looks like a safety stand. Y'all let me know if that's something else since it's got a big hollow tube, but I see they've got a welded in spot right there. It looks like for support. Really neat idea, I like that. That way if you're working underneath the trailer, it can't potentially, if something happened to the hydraulics, come down and crush you. At least that's what I think it is. It could be something else. All right, while well, I've got that safety stand up, I hope y'all can see this right here. Look at the underneath side of this trailer. This is so different from all the other ones that I looked at. So not only do we have cross member supports welded in, looks like every 18 inches. Look at these huge supports right here. So does it make sense why that's welded in where they are? That's so if you pull like say my heavy tractor in across this, we've all seen the trailers that are supported like this, just supports across. Well, every time you run a piece of heavy equipment in there, it kind of bends it down in between. So whenever you look in the bed from the outside, it's doing this number right here over all the supports. Now again, that's a very thick seven gauge steel deck, but you would see it with something heavy like say a skid steer in and out of here. 
So what they have done is bent and fabricated a full piece of steel there. It looks like it's at least eighth inch, welded it to the bottom. Now you've got all this vertical support right here, strength this way, which they've left it that length because that pocket also supports your ramps right now. So you're getting two vertical supports here on either side. It's welded completely around this square tubing steel here, but it's giving you support where the tires are gonna be, at least for my tractor. I really like the design of that. Here's the other thing I wanna show you. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. Where your wires come in the back, they could have just tucked them inside of this I-beam frame, but no, they welded in full channel right there with pockets every so often, I guess where you can pull the wire in, but it completely protects everything. That's something else you're not gonna get on a cheap trailer, a full welded in wire tray. Suspension's also greasable. That may be standard on most models, but I like to see it. And you kind of got your standard C channel right here. Again, on your really high end trailers, that's probably all gonna be boxed in, but that does cost more money. All right, so watch how quick this comes down. The first time it caught me off guard. So the first two stages, really fast. Third big stage, well, we got a lot of fluid to put back in the reservoir. That's still quicker than any trailer I've run in the past. All right, so let's talk some prices real quick, then I'm gonna wrap this video up because I'm burning up out here. So here's the thing, the cheapest dump trailer in this size that I could find looking all across the Southeast, I'm in Florida by the way, I found one for $8,000, which was by far the cheapest seven by 14 or seven by 16 dump trailer I could find. And the more I got to looking at it and realize all the features it was lacking, it looked very lightweight built, I decided it wasn't worth the money, even though that was an excellent buy for a brand new trailer, because the majority of them are, well, twice that money. So I got to look around and I found a company called Trailer Country. By the way, not sponsored, I paid full price for this trailer. Trust me, ouch. They have a company in Tennessee, in Georgia, and well, down in kind of South Central Florida where I drove. Seven hour round trip for me to get this. So here's the thing, everything minus, the, well, the spare tire that I added on for $250. This trailer right here, with all the upgrades that you see. Powder coated, overbuilt, seven gauge deck. I didn't add on none of that. That was standard from factory, oversized box. All that stuff was $10,295. Some of y'all may be saying, ouch, that's a lot of money. You probably haven't priced trailers. Those of y'all that have priced dump trailers are probably saying that is a heck of a price. Powder coated, the thickness of steel, the three-way gates, all the stuff that I just told you is crazy. Nothing's cheaped out here. Everything's a little above and beyond what I would consider a low-end model for sure by far. So I priced out. In my area, we have kind of the big brands, you know, the couple different brands with the name Texas in it, the Diamond Seas, all that kind of stuff right there. Well, I priced out some of theirs for pretty much comparable specs actually even thinner metal hardly nobody offered a seven gauge deck like this and those all come in at 15 to 17 thousand dollars for comparable specs to this so i was extremely happy to find this brand that i have never heard of before i'll admit that and save five to seven thousand dollars getting the same specs and features i felt like compared to some of the higher end models and well it can go even more expensive than the 15 to 17 thousand dollar models if you want to get the fully boxed out square tube frames and supports underneath just an extremely robust and overbuilt trailer i could see that if i was doing commercial work every day and dumping concrete and construction debris in this trailer i'd probably want that although i think this one could handle that absolutely no problem but for hauling dirt around the property compost taking my tractor to you know a friend or taking it into the shop occasionally things such as that this is going to be already beyond and overbuilt what i really need for the property but for eight thousand dollars versus well two thousand twenty three hundred dollars more i got to look at one of those other cheaper trailers compared to this there is absolutely no comparison whatsoever so shop around y'all prices are crazy right now anywhere from eight thousand to seventeen thousand dollars for the same size trailer is kind of what i'm seeing right now and i can't find a used one to save my life looking all across the southeast and the few used ones that occasionally pop up on facebook or craigslist well they want just as much as what a brand new trailer is these things are holding value like i've never seen and nobody's getting rid of them right now all right i have talked your head off this has went long enough not bragging here so excited 
excited to get this. All of my viewers have been asking for this video and looking for it. So coming up in the future, we're gonna start hauling dirt here on the property of this. We've got rock to get. I'm gonna show you how my tractor fits in here. We'll look at some of that as well. And we'll discuss some of the ways that I potentially can justify this and use it for earning some income. There is a lot of ways to earn money with a dump trailer. One other thing I wanna caution you about before you run out and buy a dump trailer, look at the legalities in your state. In Florida, for example, the combined gross vehicle weight of your towing vehicle and the trailer. So there's 14,000 pounds right here. Not what it weighs, what it's rated for full capacity. You combine that with your tow vehicle. If you go over 26,000 pounds, you need a class A CDL, if I remember correctly, but it's well, a whole new classification, a license. Every state is different. So before you go out and buy a 14,000 pound dump trailer, make sure that doesn't reclassify you in your state to require a whole new license. It may not be something you wanna get into. Some states, well, the trailer weight matters. A lot of states, it's like mine, it's combined weight of the vehicle and the trailer towing can't exceed 26,000 pounds. So don't forget to look into all that. We're gonna discuss this a lot more in the future. Thank y'all so much for watching. Thank you all who helped make this purchase possible. It's about to be used a heck of a lot on the property. We got some cool projects coming up to use this on. Catch you on the next one.